Lillian Russell, 1861 to 1922. To writer Edna Ferber, the famous full bone figure of diva Lillian Russell resembled a roller coaster. To a more poetically minded critic from the New York world, her undulating curves were so many sonnets of motion. But to most Americans, in the later two decades of the 19th century, rotund Russell, the most photographed woman of her generation, simply represented the epitome of feminine beauty. Ill-suited to the role of shrinking Victorian violet, Russell reveled in a lifestyle as flamboyant as the lush lines of her body suggested. In an era when a rare glimpse of a feminine ankle sent male minds reeling, she mounted the stage in scandalously short skirts, her study legs showcased in purple tights. Indifferent to the stares of the strangers, she rolled through Central Park on a gold-plated bicycle, its spokes studded with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. And in 1890, her well-known voice was the first to waft over the new long-distance phone wires, warbling an operatic air into the far-off ear of the president, Benjamin Harrison. Naturally, a nation that worshipped at the altar of Russell's avoir du poids hungered to know her beauty secrets. Obligingly, the press reported that the gorgeous Gormand, an Iowa girl born and bred, liked nothing better for lunch than a platter of corn on the cob followed by crepe Suzette. Her solution to the dessert dilemma was duly noted. She chose both cantaloupe and ice cream. And it was a proud day for fans of feminine flesh when she challenged outrageously outsized Diamond Jim Brady to a conspicuous consumption contest and matched him bite for bite. Nor did the dining room constitute the sole forum for the indulgent of Russell's rather Amazonian appetites. One husband would not suffice, nor even two. By her third foray into matrimony, however, even the sensual singer became sated. Skipping the customary post-nuptial pleasures in favor of a brisk poker game. I always played cards on my wedding night, she yawned. But not only her bridegroom lay awake in the dark, longing for Lillian to come to bed. Tor tormented by unrequited love for the voluptuous vocalist, whom he had never met in person, a New York machinist plunged to his death at Niagara Falls, and a Nevada man shot and killed the infidel who refused to admit that Russell was the most beautiful woman in the world. This, the jury ruled, constituted justifiable homicide. But today's post-Twiggy standards, it seems peculiar that the person who inspired such desperate passions, though only five-six tall, Tip the scales at a zaftig a hundred and sixty five pounds. But in the extravagant gilded age, the ectomorphic individual was considered merely peculiar or possibly impoverished, certainly not morally superior. There was nothing wraith like about Lillian Russell, recalled one of her wistful admirers. Long after tastes had turned toward a more compact format, we liked that. Moral of the story, I suppose, is that you should be happy with who you are and not try to fit the mold because most people don't fit the mold. And that's a good thing.